that you no longer perpetuate anything to the cause of love, but the days you void the word of God through your tradition and you have been gone. And do many things like this. Then he called the crowd up again and said to them, Listen to me all and understand. There is nothing outside a person that I can want you can defile. But the things that come out are what defile. When he left the crowd and entered into the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. He said to them, Then you also fail to understand. Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile? Since it enters on the heart, the stomach, and goes out to the sword. Thus he declared all things clean. And Jesus said, It is what comes out of a person that defiles. For it is from within and from the human heart that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, God, folly. All these evil things come from within. And they defile the person. The gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Oh, hey there, everybody. Hi. Hi. <laughs> it's, uh, thank you. It's great to be back with you all in worship after time. And learning that took me from the extremes of the desert areas of the borderland and mountains to a tundra island in the middle of the Bering Sea to the skyscraper skyline of our nation's largest city, not to mention its very rat friendly Central Park. <laughs> I've been some places, I've seen some birds, I've learned some things from being at the intersections of migration and immigration. And so now, as I hear our gospel reading for this day, I can't help but understand the story about traditions, about forsaken commandments, about hypocrisy in the inner life through this experience I just had. Some Pharisees notice that Jesus' disciples are not keeping the tradition of the elders by ritually washing their hands before they eat. So they confront Jesus, the disciples' teacher, about this offense. The Pharisees actually have a lot at stake in making sure that God's people stay faithful to the commandments and traditions and the observances and remain on fire. They believe that the righteousness of God's people, if they contain it, will rouse God to act against their oppressors, the Romans. Rather than cooperate with the occupying force, as the Sadducees do, or take up arms against them like the Zealots, or run off to the desert like the Essenes, the Pharisees are engaged in a serious effort to renew and restore their nation through the purity that comes from holding on to tradition and obeying the commandments. Jesus and his non hand washing students threaten the very future. So they cost Jesus about his disciples' non conforming behavior. He responds with revealing the disconnect between their lips and hearts, their confusion of tradition and commandment, their forsaking of the good of others for the sake of righteousness. Also, hypocrites, that is, pretenders, actors, concerned with show more than substance. In keeping up appearances of righteousness and goodness, however, in keeping their tradition, the Pharisees fail to see the human cause, the harm done. Jesus speaks of a commandment to honor one's parents. He points out to the Pharisees their pious but harmful practice of giving as an offering to God 
the very financial support that will honor and help the parents. In doing this, they void the commandment itself and pass on a tradition that will lead to destitution and suffering in the elder generation. As people come to believe that giving this gift to God is better and holier than caring for their parents. The appearance of holiness communicated in this offering meant to catch God's eye, to meant the serving and supporting of one another that was intended by the commandment. Jesus says that they do this sort of thing all the time. As do we. This became more clear to me in multiple experiences I had on this battle. I spent time in both Angel Island in San Francisco and Ellis Island in New York City. Both historic immigration stations that not only welcomed migrants into the new life in America, but also engaged in detention and deportation. By the time the stations had opened, the process of immigration had become way more restrictive than in former years. It used to be that you could just show up and reside here for a certain time period, and you'd be all good. But then, over the years, on account of racist animus, ethnic prejudice, a fear of loss of job and prosperity in the hands of these newcomers, a political games and to revolts, rules began to be set up to make the immigrant more difficult, to send messages that they should stay home, to weed out the undesirables that might threaten the future of our nation. So, just showing up here became show up at certain places, which became get in a line for a medical inspection, which became multiple medical inspections, cognitive tests, and literacy exams, which became inquiries into the character of the immigrant, which became you can't have a job lining up here before you get here, and then you need to have a job lining up before you get here, which led to quotas about who could and could not come in certain countries. The growing tradition the increasing laws and commandments around the whole process made it difficult to be more harrowing as migrants were subject to long waits about food, water, and care, at the mercy of subjective conditions whose hands are destined to lie. Of course, at Angel Island in San Francisco, the developed tradition for law had heavy consequences. As Chinese laborers made the voyage, were told they could not enter but were also imprisoned there indefinitely. Separated from families who had already arrived, or who awaited them to return one day. The process, the tradition, the rules that have been set up and maintained and added to throughout the many years, is seen as good, necessary, orderly, and lawful. But in so many ways, we find it there is the human cost. Harms of food. Unnecessary suffering. Painful exclusion. All deemed acceptable for the sake of obedience. To hold a tradition. To keep up appearances. To save and protect the nation. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. As Jesus said, many things like this. In civic, in family, in religious life, we inherit and pass on traditions and practices and customs and rules and processes that prioritize being obedient and orderly and law-abiding and traditional in a way that is at best apathetic for the suffering that that focus causes to real human beings. 
and at worst, deliberately inflicts harm in order to hear more righteous, fervent cause or see oneself as cool. One can see this dynamic at work in our own community's deliberation this summer around the homeless encampments. Is what's behind the regulatory a concern for neighbors? Or wanting our city to be seen as having its act together? One can see this at work within our families when they discourage divorce, when they keep scandalous secrets, or when they try to keep people closeted because of tradition, or to keep up social appearances as a family that's with it. One can see this at work in church life. When we hold on to liturgy or theology or programs that serve our own purposes and preferences rather than the needs of our neighbors and world around us. But we do not have to wash our hands. We are not beholden to traditions, laws, commandments, and customs that make us look good and feel right. But that disregard the harm that is brought upon the universe. Jesus Christ sets us free from all of that. Jesus recenters us in the love of God and neighbor and turns us for each other in support and care. There's no need to keep up appearances or to show off to catch God's attention. In Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, we see that God is so enamored with us, so compassionate toward us, that there's nothing we can do or not do that can make God more favorable to us, like us, more gracious, more loving. When we come to trust that God's grace is offered us without any effort on our behalf to win it from tradition or commandment, we become free from the performance. We become free from fear of becoming defiled by others. We become free from fear of the future. Apart, once we are rigid by our concern of hand washing others, the proper, the orderly, the softening to a compassionate disposition, capable of empathy, concerned with whether parents are supportive, with immigrants are being welcomed, if the homeless are being harmed, if our neighbors have or they need to thrive and flourish. But the violent forces within us of avarice, envy, slime, and pride all in place. Because Jesus is giving us a new heart. Free from having to perform or to obey the total traditional line. And now I'm set free for service, for care, for community, for love. With these new parts, we centered not in religious observance or the comfort of obedience, but in the love of God for you, for your neighbor. You are sent to the world. For your unwashed hands, for your concern for suffering, will catch the attention of others, and they will wonder why you are not keeping the traditions of the elders, of the community, of the church, of the nation. You will tell them, show them the love of God and Jesus, which is set in the And little by little, Kingdom and future of God will come to be among us with love and healing, life for all. Thanks be to God.
Story Camps at Oktoberfest. Uh, we're going to have a lot of privileges. There's a sign up on the Barbex. I think I can come. I'm going to sign up for all the hot dogs. We're out to get some of them to eat. Things like that. I'll share some highlights over my sabbatical, but later on in the fall, I'll be able to get into all that kind of stuff. Um, so that'll be a lot of fun to share with you all what has happened. Uh, Bridges to Christ, that is our congregation's women's group. Uh, we'll be meeting not this Monday, but next Monday, September 9th, at 645. Uh, the quilters are going to resume their regular schedule the second Thursday of each month. That will be September 12th, the first Thursday at 9.30 in the morning. 9.30 is really a flexible time. Right, Daryl? <laughs> People come a little later, come a little later, but 9.30, second Thursday is a uh, And then Chung is sharing that there's still great need in the community. Uh, the summer, they've never seen the band, they've never seen now. Food. So any food will help. There's a list of items there on the bottom of the announcement sheet. Are there any other announcements? Richard, a couple of big things. Um, we were having a little bit of issues with the sound system and our hearing devices, but that's been fixed now. So everybody who would hear on the sound system on that because I don't know that's fixed. And then we are also having some issues with our restrooms and our stairs right now. So uh, just try to get people upstairs for now and we'll be better. So nothing's changed.
just a subscriber, it thanks, you know, it caters the cycle, saying, take me, this is my hobby, I'll do for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, I'm just talking to the cup. I'm bringing you the thanks of you for all the training. Saying, this cup is a good cup of the shed for you and for all the people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. Gather to one, by the Holy Spirit, we pray in this Jesus' cause. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
strengthens us and keeps us in His grace. Jesus, for our life, we have received the Lord's table of the Lord's new paradise. Let's go encourage us in this new world. Now strengthen us to all the world with your own life. Glory to you, pray. The blessing of God provides for us, leads us, and brings with us. Be upon you for now, forever.
Thank you very much for, for us.